Thank you, Jeff. Hello, Frank in Zurich. Oh, welcome to the last step. This is uh, this is going to be the last episode for for a little stretch. Me and Frank are going to take a couple of weeks off at least. Uh, my morning shows will be taking a couple of weeks off and coming back <clears throat> on the fourteenth. But Frank will be flying over to the states and hopefully stopping to see us here in Camus so we can do some recording in the new studio and. We might be doing a, a whole set of new shows um, that are pre-recorded because Frank will be bouncing around and I'll have the morning shows. So it'll be probably 12 segments that we're going to share our experience and the 12 steps as we go through. So we can, going forward, we can look back and people ask questions, we can refer them to, to the shows and things like that. And it was funny, I had this whole, I had talked to Frank earlier and I had this whole show planned out. I wake up really early in the morning and... And I pray on, you know, what would you have me say? And I'm drawn to sections of the course. And some people write in questions. And my friend Christopher wrote in a question. And it was about the face of innocence. And I went into the course. And yeah, for about an hour and a half this morning, I was like so energized, like with everything I read, you know, that going through recognizing the spirit and the Savior's vision, back to choose again, choose, uh, you can choose again. And, it was like I had this beautiful thing all set up, this like basically like a sermon and it felt really good and called Frank and I shared with him and he had some thoughts on it and and now I'm here and it feels it feels my experience is different. I uh, some things have been said uh, on the previous shows about some ideas to share and I've had this inspiration in my heart for for some time and I realized today that I'm that I'm actually terrified to really share from from that place of inspiration and to follow inspiration in a lot of circumstances and it was uh, it was back probably I was in 12-step recovery back home and I had found the course and right as I was leaving the East Coast I was invited to speak into a prison um, a maximum security prison in Connecticut and I wasn't able to go because my uncle was in there and you can't go and speak at a prison when you have a family member in there, at least in the state of Connecticut. And So I always knew that I wanted to go back and when I was here, the guy kept calling me and saying, hey, can you come back and can you come back? And my uncle had been released and I was going to try to get back there. And then last year around the San Francisco uh, ACIM conference, I actually heard the words prison ministry in a meditation and I was like, I don't know what, what that is. Like, I don't, I don't think that's for me. You know, this, you must be talking to someone else. <clears throat> I went to the San Francisco conference and three people approached me at the conference talking about, one said, hey, are you the one that's going to take over Joe Wolf's prison ministry? And I'm like, dude, what, no, what are you talking about? And it was like, so the reflections would come in there and then this past summer at Strawberry, Netta, before Strawberry, Netta Bowen, went, uh, Netta Boyne went to San Quentin and she asked me to join her there and then she came to Strawberry and when she was there she said, hey, I feel that we're supposed to, you know, do something together and maybe it's a prison tour and so I... I felt it at the time. I really felt some kind of calling to this and there was still some kind of fear in my mind and I uh, sorry I'm a little distracted. Yeah so then recently I was inspired by sharing certain things with ones that I knew back east and so I started to call them and it was the idea of extending when when we had this online retreat and I know Susan spoke earlier and Jeff mentioned something uh, the last online retreat which many of you guys were at Dale Dale Crow who's in Chillicothe prison in Ohio he wrote a letter to David and it touched all of us and all of us here at Camus we wrote a letter to him afterwards it was like 
wrote all these beautiful things. We put it all in an envelope and send it. And he wrote back and I didn't, I don't know what it looks like, you know, and I started recently calling people that I knew and saying that I want to extend somehow. And this book with David coming out, you know, it was like, okay, here it is. I used to, back when I was in, when I was in Connecticut, I would go to, I was in 12 steps. I would go to the 12 step recovery store and I would buy boxes of books, large print boxes of books. And I would bring them with me everywhere I went. And every time there was a newcomer, I would give it to them. And even that, like I remember people used to tell me, yo, you got to make them buy their own book, make a commitment. But it wasn't about any of that. It wasn't about all of it. It was like it made me feel good to do it, you know, in those moments. And I just recently, you know, having this inspiration, called my parents. And, you know, part of going on this path and everything, I didn't ever want to call my parents and ask them for anything, you know. And I wanted to come from this place of sharing my inspiration. Like, hey, this is what I'm inspired to do. <laughs> you know, I'm inspired to reach people that are seemingly in prison, you know, if I'm devoting my life to the denial of guilt in all forms, if that's actually what I'm doing, I have this prayer of bring it on, like, like I want to, I want to really see it all. Like most people want a vacation to Bora Bora. I mean, there's part of my mind that wants to go sail the Mediterranean with Frank and hit up AA meetings at every port and NA meetings and all these 12 step groups and share the message. But there's this other part of my mind that I actually want to go to these places. I want to go to prisons and I want to share, you know, this line that <laughs> to whom much is given, much is asked. And there's such a willingness in my heart and it actually scares me even to talk about it or to say it on a show. And so I called my, my parents and I, I shared with them. I said, hey, I'm inspired to call prisons and recovery places, the recovery place that I went through back in Connecticut. I've called them already and I said, hey, I'm inspired to send some books and it's about, you know, forgiveness and it's based in an ACIM and, you know, how many books can I send you? And then I started calling other people. My uncle now is actually out of prison, but he's back into another place where I used to go speak every Sunday night with my sponsor. And it was a corrections place. It was a place where people could go instead of going to prison. They had a choice, seemingly, that they could either go to this place and spend 45 days or longer to practice recovery and all these things. And we used to go there every Sunday. And then at our other meeting, we would ask people, can you donate books, any spiritual book you have? And then we would hand them out at those meetings. And I remember seeing those guys' faces, like the guys that would sit up front that were so open to it, were so inspired by these things. So I called this guy a couple of nights ago and I called him and I said, I said, hey, Bill, so you've been asking me after I gave him all my Eckhart Tolle and all these other things when I left, you know, three years ago, I gave him all my CDs and spiritual stuff. I loaded it all on him and he loved it. And he said, let me know what my next book is when it comes out. And I said, hey, Bill, I got the book for you. It's coming out. And I said, listen, I also want to send you a hundred of them, maybe more so that you can bring them to Sunday nights and hand them out to those guys. And he was so happy. He was like, oh, I'm your man. Send me as many as you've got. I'll get them in the hands of the people that need it. And it was like, and I realized just by following this inspiration or prompts, just a little bit was opening up my heart and my mind. So then I made another call and I called my friend Jimmy and I said, hey, Jim, he actually follows me on these shows. And I called him up and I said, hey, Jim, I don't know if we can get these books into the Connecticut prisons because I know it's hard to get books in there, but I'd like you to receive some for me. He was so overcome with joy. He said, he said, it's an honor. It's an honor that I'll do that for you. And he goes, not only that, I can get the books in the prison. You can't get them in there, you know, but he can get them in like one by one or handing them out to these people. And so then just before the show, it's like, I really want to extend in this way. And I, I keep praying, how can I do it? After the show, I'm going to go on Facebook and I'm going to put a post. Anyone, any one of my friends that has an inmate number or someone who's in recovery, if they're in a 28-day or a 45-day, private message me their information, their address. Private message me their inmate number and I'll send them a book directly. And then even with what, where I was going with that other part is... My uncle's now in that place, my buddy Jimmy. I said, hey, Jimmy, I want to get this book into my uncle's hands. He goes, don't worry, I'll do it for you. 
like nothing is outside of like this inspiration when I open it up and it's funny I, I uh, even before the show I started I was in the shower when I was praying on I mean I was ready to read the face of innocence and all this stuff you know and me and Frank were talking about the face of innocence is this idea that everything metaphysical ghosting we call it here most of the time and this idea that everything's great but deep down we have all this terror that we don't want to look at and you know David says when he speaks those the people that are in recovery and most of the people in prison are one step away from awakening from the realization it's the ones that are you know driving down the highway slip sliding away that think everything's perfect that are too you know, doubly removed from, from heaven, from reality. And I said that to Frank, and the other day I was talking with someone here, and I shared something about my experience, and they're like, oh, that's, that's terrible. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, no, no, it's not terrible. It's actually what I needed. Like, I was sharing with Frank earlier, if I wasn't, if I didn't have these seeming disease, disease, you know, of drugs and alcohol, I would still be out there in the world thinking I was happy, you know? I told Frank, like, me and you would be, if we could only drink a six-pack and smoke a half a joint, you and me, we'd, we would be on a yacht, <laughs> just driving around thinking we were in heaven, you know, in, in the Savior's vision. There's this choice thinking that it's heaven or hell, it's a choice I make. But when I don't know, then I'm, then I'm gone. And most of these people, like the ones that I've met in recovery and ones that are in prison and seemingly like trapped are so ready for for this message of hope and it's like you know I always think that I was given my given this gift of innocence and in 12 steps they say love and tolerance is our code you know if I could go into a hundred prisons and convince one person that he wasn't alone when I went to the website for, our, for the new book, This Moment is Your Miracle. It says, how do I transcend fear, this loneliness, depression, and fear? Like, to give them a book that has the spiritual tools that might reach more people than a 12-step book, because a lot of people don't even want to admit that. If I could actually give that to one person, that is like... <sighs> yeah, again, it feels like I'm reaching different parts of my mind with it, and I don't know what it is, and... Yeah, I just want to be open to whatever the inspiration is. And Frank, this was kind of surprised. I didn't know <laughs> what this was going to be like when I started talking about it. But it was like when I started looking at even the course this morning when I was talking to Frank and he was like, ah, I'm not really feeling the section. But that choose again section, I've been you know doing that over and over. and I've been reading that section. And I was amazed when I was looking at the book this morning. I was like, oh, my God. It's becoming so simple, like, that it is all the same. It's like, when I read the end, I'm like, just over and over, he's asking us to choose again. And it's like, if you haven't heard us for the first 666 pages, here's one more section. <laughs> you can choose again at the very end. It's like, oh, my God. And I can choose again, even to follow these prompts. And I guess I just want to expose my fear around it and thinking of what people will think or that I'll be unsuccessful, all the fears that are in my mind, I don't want them anymore, you know. I actually want, when I was in the shower, I started praying, and there was a, a call I had with some, uh, some of our um, mighty companions in Mexico, and, and just this emotion came up in me that, yeah, there's a lot of inspiration to share, you know, what has been so freely given, and that's 12 steps, what has been so freely given to me, and what has been given to me, an idea of innocence in my mind, not the face of innocence, the true. So if I can reach one person, you know, seemingly outside of myself, that's the way I have to. Those questions, if you've watched my morning show, the nightly review, the last one that I shared on that morning show, it was, am I thinking of myself? Question mark. And then I write, yeah, I'm thinking of myself here and here. Or am I thinking of others and what I can pack into the stream of life? So I literally want to embrace that question and see what I can do for others as this show comes to a first season close. And maybe this year is the year for me for a prison ministry or just reaching out in different ways and me and Frank having inspirations around pre-recorded shows where we can get you know, more creative. And even in that, the new Spirit Direction, we wanna 
extend our message to people. We want to be, reach people in a new way like Andy and Nicholas are talking about, the millennials and these ones. And Jonas, if you're watching, he, call, he sends me messages every morning because my new show is relatable. He, can, he says it's tangible, something I can do. And it's like, I guess I'm on here today just to share my prayer and say this is what I'm going to do. I'm going up into a silent retreat for a week and I said, oh, now I'm, I want to make all these calls or I want to take my computer and hopefully when I send this this Facebook post out. My name is Jeffrey Thomas on Facebook. And if anyone watching knows anyone that went into recovery or even just needs this message, they don't have to be in a place or has a prison or a prison number. And I'm calling Dale's prison tomorrow to see how many books I can send Dale. I called on two days ago and they said, call back on Monday and talk to the warden. And it's like, even when I do each, I called the Utah State Prison. I said, talk to the mailroom on Monday. I'm going to call them back and say, Okay, how many books can I send to the prison? Then maybe someday I'm going to be walking through Utah and run into a guy and have a holy encounter with someone that read this book. Oh, you live with David? Oh, I read this book. And then there's going to be this, oh my God, I'm actually freeing my own mind in some way. So anyway, Frank, maybe we should see how you're doing. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, they said a lot of things. Um, I... Uh... You know, it's very, it's always been inspiring for me to, uh, you know, to extend. And I love this word extend. And I learned it from you guys that, you know, there is this, uh, this thing in the process that we have, you know, that we have to, we're responsible. And it's almost like going out to, um, uh, uh, you know, recruit, like, you know, we have the attraction rather promotion principle rather than promotion principle, but it's a very thin line to go out and save the world, you know, and this is what I learned from, uh, uh, you know, since I've, I've joined is that uh, it's not to, to, to save the world, but just, you know, we're asking spirit, where do you want me to be? And I'm, I'm exactly at the right place at the right time saying things, you know, that I say, wow, did I just say this, you know, or, you know, even closing my eyes and say, what do I answer to this, you know, and then this perfect sentence comes out, you know, and, and it's really such a gift to be able to, to extend and, and uh, also with the books and, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it also for me, you know, when I was, when I was, when you we were talking, I was thinking, yes, this is really, it's a mission, you know, it's, it's such an honor to be able to, um, you know, extend such this super powerful thing, mm. you know, and, and thinking of how I felt when I, you know, when I came into the program in 1984, I mean, I was lower than the lowest, you know, crawl, crawling under a rock. And today, uh, look what, what, what we can do. And like, as you said, you know, I don't, I didn't do it, uh, out of virtue, I did it because uh, really I didn't have a choice. And you know, this is literally this is what I'm learning now too. I don't, ha I never had a choice. And I think at one point, you know, in 1984, I thought I had a choice. I was going to, I was going to to give myself an overdose, and not. And it was really, it was very, you know, it was there the, the choice. And I thought, and then some thought came into my mind. And I thought, just give it another few hours. You know, <laughs> it turned into 35 years. But um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, you know, this is where, where I was, this is what I was always supposed to do. And, um, and like, you know, I, if I knew what it was going to entail, because some of it is so hard, I don't know <laughs> if I would have made that choice. <laughs> in 1984 but you know as i said i i probably didn't have it and um and so you know the, your prison you know all this stuff is very it's really inspiring what i've been getting to do in the last year and i have been able to contribute and um you know as you said if there you know there's that line in the big book uh, it says if that then Bacchus boomeranged on us, which you know Bacchus being the the god of wine, and uh, and I would say yeah, if he hadn't boomeranged on me, I like you said I would still be doing it, you know. Mm. So 
Um, but that wasn't, you know, part of this real rock, I mean, the, the rock bottom, and, and you mentioned that before, was very hard for me. It was, uh, you know, it involved, uh, I mean, I was heavily addicted to heroin and, you know, and, uh, and so much guilt and I mean, it was horrible, but I'm so grateful for it today. You know, nothing, there's, there's a promise we will not, we will not wish to shut the door in the past. And, um, you know, I'm really grateful for the whole path. Mm. And I find, uh, you know, you, you said a lot will be asked and I find incredibly a lot is asked. And sometimes I think it's too much. I <laughs> remember telling David, oh my God, why me? You know, uh, when we were having dinner or something and, and uh, it is a lot to undo all this. And, you know, I wasn't so inspired about that uh, self-concept versus self thing. Read that yesterday. But that is the hardest thing is to undo the self-concept. And I didn't, you know, and this is something we learned in, in the steps before is that we had to learn to become transparent very quickly because otherwise we were going to die. So the part in that, in there where, where I, did, I didn't understand. And I mentioned to you about, you know, the, what was it? The face, the, do you remember? The um, face of innocence. Yeah, the face of innocence. I don't have to wear that anymore. And I haven't been, I, I didn't have to wear that for a long time. Um, but as you said, I was really very inspired recently by the, um, Choose again, you know, and it's, it's fine. I'm reading this uh, a lot and, you know, to, to know I can feel this connection with the son of God, you know, my true self. And I can really feel that strength, you know, that's there. And sometimes it's really easy to say, I will choose that and not the weakness. And sometimes it's incredible high, incredibly hard because I'm not connected to it at all, you know. But um, but it's such a cool, uh, you know. It's it, yeah. It's what, what did you say? Six hundred and sixty-six pages later, and I thought, oh, I shouldn't even be reading this. I'm not even there yet. And yet, you know, now it's been the thing that's be, been with me the most. That I can really go and choose. Uh, choose the Christ, you know, choose the son of God. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I had to go for an MRI the other day and it was a very uncomfortable thing they did. And, and, you know, they put you in this, but it was uncomfortable also physically the position they put me in. And I just get, went in with that thought, you know, and I was in there for about 40 minutes. And, um, and at one point, you know, they put this thing in your veins. It's a, I don't know, some kind of uh, something to, for them to see. And I thought they put, a, uh, they put some tranquilizer in there. And, um, and when I came out, you know, I, I asked them, what did you put in there? He said, we didn't put anything. I was totally, you know, I was so relaxed because I kept, because I, I, I um, you know, it really worked. It really worked. I, I just went in there and I chose the strength. I will not choose weakness, you know, and it was, um, and it's so tangible, you know, it was very tangible for me. So, um, I go back to it every time now I'm, I'm, I'm reading it several times a week and it's very powerful for me. Mm. Yeah. As you were uh, speaking, I went to grab my, my journal and I didn't bring my pen in with me because I was going to write something that came to me because after I spoke and you started it was anyone that watches my my morning shows on Tuesday and Thursday I'm always asking questions you know because the ego is the questioning part of my mind so I want to present the right questions to it and I wrote down earlier you know what is the meaning of what I behold and that's part of the things what is it for about this question that I ask myself at night and what I'm sharing about you know here today and what Frank's touching on is this idea of extension, you know, or projection. This is the choice, you know, that he says in the last section, continues to hammer at home, you know. 
that I am choosing extension or projection. So as I go into a silent retreat for a week, this is going to be a great question to ask myself. And the question is, what am I communicating? You know, how am I, if the body is a communication device, I want it to be used. And maybe it is me sending books to, to Dale and every other one that, that can show up, you know, in my mind. But if I can actually ask that question, then the other question that I ask at the end of the night, what am I doing for others? What am I packing into the stream of life? I can keep that present in my mind. Because as you know, in the 12 steps, it's we're just moving from self to others. That's one to 12. It's like at the beginning, I think I have control and I'm moving away from it to service. You know, honesty is the first spiritual principle and service is the last one. So I guess I want to keep that question as our last episode you know, of the first season comes to a close. I really want to keep that in my awareness. What am I communicating today? It's the same thing I spoke before when step two. How am I rightly relating to my fellows? Because how I do that is how I'm relating to my higher power, to God. And so I really want to keep that question. And I'm going to keep that part of my journal now. As this show comes to a close and we start getting into the new Spiri direction and the new studio, which... Jason's going to be on next to share some about his new show idea and with Frank coming this way and our new show, how it'll look. If you have any ideas, message me and Frank, you know, Jeffrey Thomas, Facebook, along with someone that you think needs this message of hope, you know, this spiritual toolkit, you know, even in the 12 steps, it says, are we able to use the spiritual toolkit laid at our feet? And it's like, so now it's this idea of, yeah, I always think of Spider-Man, too, when I hear that line of, you know, with great, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. Well, guess what? Given the power of God, it's going to seem, while I believe in a body and world, that I can extend in that way. What's his name there? Wapnik. When you look at the amount of stuff that guy wrote, Yoganando, when you see the end of his movie, it's like he went into his room and started writing for years. You know, David. David's on the internet all the time, wakes up at three in the morning, and he's emailing people and he's extending constantly because it brings him joy. It's like, I want to be used in the same way. So right now that's my prayer and I'm going to keep this question at the forefront of my mind. How am I communicating? And yeah, so I just wanted to share that with everyone here on the last step for our show and with you, Frank, and I look forward to you coming our way. So, uh, yeah, we got a couple of minutes left, Frank. I don't know if you have any. Yeah, you know, I was uh, this extending, um, uh, like you know, I just have a, a, I, I wasn't feeling well today. I, I've been sick in bed for the couple of days, and I thought, uh, you know, I don't want to do the show, and I, 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 I wish I muted myself because I was coughing, and then I realized, you know, uh, I have, I, I have to extend, you know, and. Um, you know, if I hadn't, and this is, and I love being on, I love being on the show, but uh, today I just uh, uh, thought, you know, I was to try, trying to, to, to so, so it, I had to, to sort of push myself to do it. And, and um, you know, if I hadn't done, I've, I've done a lot of things that I didn't want to do. And uh, that's why I'm, I'm here. You know, that's why I'm still here 35 years later. And, um, uh, you know, so my ego also, when, when I come, when I joined, you know, like now I, I was, I spent uh, Christmas with David and Lisa and I spent a lot of time with them in the last three months, really. And then when I come back, you know, and sometimes when I come back from a retreat, I get really sick. And that's another thing, you know, that um, those are just those, uh, those ego, um, I guess, uh, ego whiplash or no backlash, and and I just walk through it. You know, I I walk through it and I show up. Um, also, when I don't want to show up. Mm. So I think that's um, the two minutes right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Frank. Thank you all. For joining the last step, and we will be back. Good day. <laughs>